This is another training video by SQLserver2012tutorial.com. Today, our topic of discussion is creating database objects. So without any further delay, let's take a look. Which objects are we talking about? Well, the objects we will take a look at today include the actual database. As you know, databases are the building blocks of storage in SQL Server 2012. And then we will also talk about tables that include fields, also known as columns, and records, which is also known as rows. So uh, those are the two uh, items that we will cover. So as far as creating a database, you can use multiple methods in SQL Server. The first one, which is the easiest one to do, is to use the SQL Server Management Studio, or it's also known as SSMS, we will uh, create a database doing that first. Then we will take a look at Transact SQL, which is also commonly known as SQL, T-SQL. And then um, we will cover Template Browser, which is yet another option. And this actually used to be known as Template Explorer, but pretty much is the same thing, okay? So moving on, uh, as for creating a database using SSMS, uh, this is definitely the easiest way to do this. Uh, let's take a look at some important considerations. When naming objects, you should always use intuitive information with no spaces. So for example, uh, like, like it says here, you know, if your database is going to cons contain uh, sales type information like customers, orders, go ahead and call it sales. I mean, don't uh, use some generic name or some random uh, word to describe that. Okay. Another important point is as far as uh, performance, the data file and the log file, these really should be on separate physical drives. Now, why is that? Well, what happens is that over time, your database is going to get rather large, right? And your data file is typically going to use for reading information while a log file is always written to. So in other words, one, 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 you know, one file is doing a lot more read activity and the other one is doing uh, a lot more write activity. And if you put them on the same drive, then you're going to, you know, lose some performance as, as the disk is trying to decide what are you trying to achieve. So uh, this is why you need to separate that as a best practice. Now, as far as if you're running a production database, uh, you know, let's say a 24-7 type operation, the recovery uh, model should be set to full, okay? And then finally, um, auto growth, which is a parameter that we will take a look at, you should always use MB uh, megabytes instead of using the percent. And this will make sense as we go through, through our demos. So the first thing we're going to do is to create a database called school. This is going to contain information like students and teachers and whatnot. So before we do that, let me show you how to launch SSMS. You're going to do uh, all programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2012, and then SQL Server Management Studio. By the way, uh, you will notice uh, that I will switch uh, between SQL and SQL. Uh, either one is fine. I uh, prefer using SQL, but I will uh, go back and forth uh, between them. Uh, so once I launch this, it's going to ask you which server do you need to connect to and I'm running uh, SQL Server 2012 on my local box. Uh, in your case, you know, you may be running uh, this in your company so you will have to connect to your proper uh, server, I guess. And then once you're in, in your instance, the next thing you need to do is you need to go to Object Explorer, Database, and then New Database, okay? And then you enter information like file, location, size, and whatnot. So so let's go ahead and do that. We are going to switch gears. Uh, I'm going to go to Start, All Programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2012, and then Management Studio. And now, as it launches this, uh, it, is, it is going to ask you, uh, you know, what uh, there, there are two, two important things. First of all, you need to choose what server type are we connecting to. Uh, in our case, we are choosing database engine, 
but uh, be mindful that you can connect to other things like reporting services, integration services, and we will cover those at a later video. But for now, we are going to connect to database engine and uh, server name. In our case, we're just using a period, which means it's connecting to my local machine. You, you could possibly add a machine name in here if you have that you could even add a uh, IP address or something along those lines some people do that but for me it's uh, it's my local machine I am using Windows authentication and another option is to use SQL authentication which for now we're not going to use and then I will simply hit connect okay so now we are in management studio and this window here is called object explorer there is another one uh, <clears throat> which is known as registered uh, servers uh, where you can organize uh, your servers we will uh, primarily be working in object explorer if you want to know more about the layout and whatnot we do have another video that uh, pretty much talks about sql server management studio so i would definitely encourage uh, that you watch that now if i come back to uh, my powerpoint notice that i need to go to object explorer database and new database and for now i'm just going to use um, this as my name so uh, i go to uh, the database tab okay in fact i will just right click on it select new database okay and this is where we need to information <clears throat> enter information on the database so um, I'm adding school as the name of my database you'll notice in here that um, you know it automatically creates two files the, this first one is like I mentioned the actual data file okay and the second one is is the log file now if I expand this um, you'll notice that there are a few things we need to consider we had mentioned the auto growth I'm going to click on the ellipses and um, this is what I was saying that instead of percent it's better to use megabytes and what happens is as your database grows big you want to uh, include it by increments okay so let's say maybe your database is 10 gigs okay and if you're trying to add it by uh, by 10 percent you know that is one gig at a time which is a huge amount of space so we prefer to do uh, or it's best practice to add you know in megabytes for now I'm okay with unlimited uh, this is not something you should um, do as far as in production environment and then I'm also going to change the setting for my log file I'm going to use megabytes again and then you know let's go ahead and use 100 megabytes okay we'll leave unlimited now as for as path you'll notice that again I am using a C drive in my case um, you know this is not the preferred location uh, if this was a database server you should definitely be seeing <coughs> multiple drives in here uh, in fact it's not uncommon to have uh, you know program files for SQL on C uh, data files on D log files on E and whatnot but um, I'm just doing a demo so I will I will leave those as is uh, you can uh, feel free to look under options I'm not really going to change anything um, one thing I did want to make sure that I'm using a recovery model of full and uh, we will cover that in a separate video but uh, uh, file groups again I don't need to change anything in here and then I will click OK so just like that we have created our school database if you expand this node you'll need, notice that we have uh, several different options so let's go ahead and take a look at the tables you just click on the plus button and notice there are no tables in here as of yet so that is simply how you create a database uh, using SSMS the other item is to use a to create a database using T-SQL um, which as, as I mentioned is known as transact SQL so what you do is you use a command called create database command uh, here is a base basic syntax so let let us go down uh, this list um, quite a few flags in here don't be alarmed it's not uh, really rocket science you use a create database command then you actually give it the name of the database okay and then uh, you use the word on okay 
And now if you look, uh, we are basically separating the two parts. This part up here has to do with the data file and this part here has to do with the log file. They look very similar so I'll just cover this one maybe. Uh, here it mentions this is the logical name for the log file. Okay, This is physical location which in our case we just saw the C drive. Uh, initial file size in MB and then maximum file size in MB which is megabytes and then file growth which is a parameter using either percent or MB and like I mentioned you do want to use MB uh, as a preferred method. I will say the, uh, one more item in here <clears throat> as far as excuse me as far as size uh, let's say you know you anticipate the database to be quite large um, with lots of information it is much better to create uh, space for it in the beginning instead of you know starting out with a small database and you let SQL Server manage the space. Uh, so in other words you should put some consideration into it and do some planning and come up with a better estimate uh, for creating this database. So for this one we are going to create an HR database and I already have a script ready to go so again I am going to switch to management studio and load up a script so in, other, in order to load the script you go to file open file you can also do control o okay or my favorite is just clicking on this icon and it is going to bring up your C drive we already have this uh, ready to do its magic and now uh, real quickly if you see um, you know you have the <clears throat> by the way you always use master database to create a new database as that is the uh, the heart of SQL Server that controls a lot of this information so we have to do that then uh, like I mentioned we just use the you know the syntax create database name of our database is HR this again if you're paying attention is our data file information and this is our log information okay and I have everything in here ready to go as far as executing uh, code in SQL Server you just highlight the part that you would like to execute and then you can either hit F5 or this little uh, exclamation button over here <coughs> And now, uh, if we did this right, it should go ahead and create an HR database. And you'll notice the confirmation down here, uh, commands completed successfully. Now, if you notice, um, we st still do not see an HR database in here. Um, and this is one of those things in SQL Server that you will get used to. You have to right click wherever you are and then select good old refresh. Okay. When I do that, you should see HR pop right here okay so so that was that um, there are a few other uh, vital database commands that I would like to mention uh, you have uh, alter database which basically 